epicycloid. In this video, we will learn how to draw an epicycloid. Let's understand what epicycloid means. Suppose there is a circle, having a point on its circumference that rolls on a curved surface. As the circle rolls over this curved surface, the point on the circumference moves with it. If the initial position of the point is here, as the circle rolls over this curved surface, the position of this point also changes. And the path taken by this point, while the circle is rolling over this curved surface, is called the epicycloid. In this video, we will see how to draw this epicycloid. Here are the instructions to draw. Draw an epicycloid of a circle of diameter 50 mm, which rolls outside another circle of 150 mm diameter for one complete revolution. Also, draw a tangent and a normal to the epicycloid at a point 120 mm from the center of the directing circle. In this question, it is given that the circle of 50 mm rolls outside another circle of 150 mm diameter for one complete revolution. If there is a point on this small circle, as the circle rolls, the path taken by this point on the circle is the required epicycloid, which we have to draw. Also, we need to draw a tangent and a normal on this epicycloid at 120 mm from the center of the directing circle, which is this circle. Let's draw. First, we need to draw this larger circle of 150 mm in diameter. For drawing this epicycloid, we only need this area of the larger circle. So we need to draw only this arc. To draw the arc, we need the radius of the larger circle, and the angle made by the arc at this center. To find this angle we know that this arc length is exactly equal to the circumference of the circle. Therefore, we can use this equation. Small d divided by capital D times 360 degrees. Here, small d is the diameter of a smaller circle, and capital D is the diameter of the larger circle. Therefore, the small diameter is 50, divided by the bigger diameter is 150, multiplied by 360 degrees, which equals 120 degrees. Therefore, this angle theta will be 120 degrees. Let's start drawing. Take a center point for a larger circle. We will name this point as O. Draw an inclined line from this point. Take a protractor, keep it at this point O, and mark a point at 120 degrees from the inclined line. Using this point as a reference, draw a line from the center point. After this, take a compass, and take a radius of a larger circle on the compass, which will be half of 150 millimeters, that is, 75 millimeters or 7.5 cm. Using this point as a center, Draw an arc from one line to another. Mark these intersection points as P and Q. Next, extend this line up to some length and mark the radius of the smaller circle on this line. The radius of the smaller circle is half of 50 millimeters, which is 25 millimeters or 2.5 cm. Mark a point at 2.5 centimeters from this P point and name this point as C. Take a compass, take this 2.5 centimeters on the compass, then using point C as a center, draw a circle. After this, we need to divide this circle into 12 parts. You can divide it into any number of parts, but in this video, I will be dividing it into 12 parts. When we divide this circle into 12 parts, each sector will be 30 degrees. Take a protector, keep it like this, see that the center point on the line coincides properly with the protector, and mark 30 degrees, 60, 90, 120, and 150 degrees. Take a ruler, and using this point as a reference, draw a line passing through the center up to the circumference on the other side. Similarly, draw using other points. After dividing this circle into 12 parts, next, we need to do the numbering for these points. 1, 2, 3, and up to 12. We need to consider an initial point for reference. This will be our initial point, mark this point as P. After this, we need to draw arcs passing from each of these points. Take a compass, keep it at this center and use the distance from this center to point 6 as a radius to draw an arc. Similarly, do for all the points. Yeah. 
Also, draw an arc passing through a center point C. When the smaller circle rolls over this curved surface, all these points will come in contact with this curved surface. We need to mark all these points on the curve. To get the exact location of these points on the curve, we need to divide this arc into 12 equal parts. To do so, we need to divide this 120 degrees into 12 parts, which will be equal to 10 degrees. That means this angle is 10 degrees. So, take a protractor, keep it like this, on this line, and see that the center point O is coinciding with the protractor center. And mark 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, and so on up to 110 degrees. After this, using these points as a reference draw a line from the center point O, up to this center arc. With these lines we got all the required points. Name these points as 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash, and so on up to 12 dash. Next, mark these points as C1, C2, C3 and so on up to C12. Next, we need to mark the path taken by the point P. We can see that, as the circle rolls from center C to C1, this point P reaches this arc passing through point 1. When the circle rolls from point C1 to C2, the P point reaches the second curve, and so on. To mark this point P, we know that the distance of point P from the center of its circle is fixed, that is, 25 millimeters. So, take a compass, take this radius and keep it at center C1, and cut an arc on the first curve. As the circle rolls to center C2, the point will be on the second curve, cut an arc on the second curve. When it reaches C3, point P will be on the third curve, therefore, cut an arc on this curve, and so on. Similarly, cut arcs on all the curves. After this, name these points as, P1, P2, P3, and so on up to P12. Draw a smooth arc passing through all these points. This is the final required epicycloid. Next, we need to draw a tangent and a normal to the epicycloid, at a point 120 mm from the center of the directing circle. Here, the center of the directing circle, which means, the center of a larger circle. Take a compass, take 120 mm or 12 cm on the compass, use point O as a center and cut an arc on the epicycloid. Mark this intersection point as M. After this, take a compass, take the radius of the circle and use point M as a center, and cut an arc on the curve which is passing through all the center points. Mark this point as X. After this, take a ruler, using this point as a reference draw a line up to the center point O. Next, name this intersection point as, N. Draw a line passing through these N and M points. This line is normal to the epicycloid curve. After this draw a perpendicular line to this normal, which will be the tangent to the curve. I hope you have understood how to draw an epicycloid. If you like this video, click on the like button, and if you are new to my channel ADTW Learn, click on the subscribe button, and turn on all notifications to get all my latest videos.